Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Ocean County School Counselors Association Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening this evening, and all have been recorded and will be available within about a week's time at strivescan.com backslash O-C- S C A. Now I'm pleased to turn it over to our presenters and we'll begin this evening with LaSalle University. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Snover and I'm an assistant director here at LaSalle University. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you now. And we will get started. So um, here at LaSalle University, we are nestled in Newton, Massachusetts which is right outside of Boston. It is a gorgeous suburb um, right outside of Boston, like I said, and this is just a picture of our campus. Um, so just a brief overview, just so you get to know a little bit more about our campus. So we're about eight miles from Boston, the heart of the city. Um, our students go in and out of the city all the time, but like I said, still nestled in this beautiful little community to make it feel like a stereotypical college town. Um, we have about 1,800 undergraduate students currently enrolled at LaSalle, which allows us to have smaller class sizes, as you can see, with a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 17. Um, our class sizes are typically capped at about 25, too, so it's nice to have that really personal experience and the fact that you get to know your professors and peers is truly a, a really great thing for a lot of our students currently enrolled here at LaSalle. We do have a couple of different ways that you can go about earning your degree here. So we do have the typical four-year option to get your bachelor's degree, but we also do have three-year degree bachelor options and five-year master's program options as well if you'd like to opt into something like that. Here at LaSalle, we do have a really great opportunity for students to have internships. In fact, 100% of our students do have internship experiences before they graduate. That just means that before you leave us, you will have to take part in an in internship. It is built into our curriculum. You must take one. And our students absolutely love the experiences they get from their internships. Um, a big piece of what we do here at LaSalle is connected learning. And that is really just taking what you're learning in the classroom and putting it into play in the real world. So through an internship, studying abroad, community service, working with our student activities to you know, lead clubs and organizations. We do have a lot of students that put this connected learning philosophy into play almost every single day that they're here on campus. Currently about 80% of our students are resident students. We have been open all year um, through the uh, coronavirus pandemic. So we have been lucky enough to have a large number of our students return to campus and we've all been very healthy and we've had a really great testing process. Um, so since 80% of our students are resident students, we do have a lot of clubs and organizations as well. Our students are very involved. They are the kind of students that are consistently taking part in more than just one or two clubs. Um, there are a lot of athletes on campus as well. So we are NCAA Division III uh, members of the GNAC Conference. And we have about 17 varsity sports currently at LaSalle, as well as club sports and intramural sports. So just to kind of dive into the academic schools a little bit. So um, we currently have five schools. Um, within those schools, we do have a school of business. So that is really focused in on management, marketing, sports management, things like that, entrepreneurship as well. We have a school of communication in the arts. So that really focuses in on graphic design as well as um, we are looking at sports communication, journalism, things like that. We have a whole school of fashion. So that really focuses in on the three main uh, fashion realm. So we're looking at design, we're looking at merchandising and media and marketing, um, a school of health science. So that has majors like obviously health science, biology, exercise science, and forensic science. And then we also have our school of humanities, education, justice, and social sciences. So that school really encompasses a large number of our majors here at LaSalle. So uh, we have our education program with certificates, we have psychology, sociology, criminal justice, um, law and public affairs, all kinds of wonderful majors in that School of Humanities, Education, Justice, and Social Sciences. And I do also put on this um, slide that we have a 98% job placement rate six months after graduation. It is an awesome statistic 
our students leave LaSalle extremely prepared for the real world and ready to take on their first job, which is so incredible. Um, we talk to a lot of our students as they're graduating and they say that they are very confident in finding a new position after they leave us. If you're looking for a full list of majors, you can find that on our website and um, you can do so at the link below. So just a couple of next steps. Um, so we are having a virtual spring open house on April 10th. It's going to be a really great day. You get to meet with some faculty and talk with some admissions personnel and just get a feel for what we have to offer here at LaSalle. Um, we are also offering in-person visits. So if you'd like to come visit our campus, you can sign up for that on our website. Um, I'd love to host you and your family here for a day if you are interested in visiting. And you can start applying August 1st if you're interested in applying. Um, our application requirements are your application, an essay. We also need a letter of recommendation and your transcripts. So that is what we are requiring. Um, we are test optional and have been for quite some time. So you can uh, you know, give us your test scores or not. It's really up to you on how you'd like to handle that. And we also just like to remind that the FAFSA application will open on October 1st. So this is my contact information. Feel free to jot that down. So if you're interested in LaSalle, I am going to be your point person. I'm the one that works with New Jersey students in our office. Um, so my number is below as well as my email address. And I would absolutely love for you to follow us on our social media sites. So we are on Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and now on TikTok. So feel free to give us a follow. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Jessica. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Lebanon Valley College. <clears throat> All right, let me just share this screen here. And, oh, come on. There we go, hopefully everyone can see that. Am I good to go here? All right, thank you, Jessica, for your presentation. Um, to follow it up, so my name's Cole Godfrey. Uh, I'm uh, the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Lebanon Valley College. And I'm gonna to turn to here, but yeah, so Lebanon Valley College, we're just about 1600 uh, full-time students, just a little bit over 1600 full-time students at the college. So located right outside of Hershey, Pennsylvania um, is where we reside at. So we're, we're, a, um, we're about a 300 acre campus. Our average class size is about 20 students with uh, 10 to one student or a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So if you're someone that really likes being involved and getting uh, to know your professors and other things like that, uh, then LVC could be a great place for you to thrive at, hopefully. And there's a ton of ways to get involved. Like it says here, we have over 90 plus student clubs and organizations, as well as uh, 26 varsity intercollegiate athletic uh, programs on campus as well, too. Um, we also, um, one of them being men and women's uh, ice hockey, and we also have esports as well, too, if anyone's ever interested in uh, esports. Uh, 40 plus majors on, on campus. Um, some of the more popular ones that we that we have uh, our uh, direct admit uh, direct admit programs such as um, physical therapy athletic training speech language pathology those are all direct entry programs into graduate school so once you apply and you get in um, as a freshman you are in for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the time there whether it's a five-year or six-year program um, so other ones that are different we have an actual actuarial science program that's very strong some variety of music majors relating to music, music education, music business, audio music production, um, and then as well as an accounting and MBA three plus one uh, program. So you come, you graduate with your accounting undergrad degree in three years, and you get your master's in um, your master's in business uh, for that fourth year. So you can try to graduate a little bit earlier. We are really fortunate to be ranked number one in Pennsylvania for job placement upon gra graduation uh, three years in a row. So just over 96% uh, of our students are getting jobs within their field of study uh, upon graduation. So it's a really um, amazing thing to be able to uh, say that and see uh, all the hard work that goes in um, to, um, to things by our students, our faculty and the people on campus. So uh, number one in Pennsylvania, in, for, in Pennsylvania, three years running. Uh, for for job placement upon graduation. Um, so yeah, here's a couple of uh, just, I guess, an overview of what campus looks like uh, for you to be able to see. I always say that we're kind of divided up by like a north and south end, more so or less, where the north end is kind of like all of our athletic uh, facilities, as well as um, our health science majors. And then on the other side, on the south end of campus, 
is a lot of our um, like our dorm halls and, and other administrative buildings and classrooms as well too. Um, yeah, here's just a couple more just pictures of what campus looks like. I'll just kind of go through them here. Um, and then we yeah, have that's football field and our new um, health science building. And then the last slide that I wanted to just end on is just the merit scholarships that we offer. So we are a rolling admission school and we, we, uh, we accept students on a rolling basis and it is free to apply to Lebanon Valley College. But these are the, the merit scholarships that we award uh, right upon acceptance, um, right off the bat. So um, you could be eligible for a scholarship uh, anywhere from $20,000 all the way up to $30,000 um, every year, all four years that you are a student at Lebanon Valley College. And um, we, are, uh, we are test optional for all majors and whatnot. So um, it, similar to uh, LaSalle that you are able to submit them if you would like to, or you don't have to if you don't want to. But, uh, and then finally, um, you can ignore that text uh, LVC thing to that number, but follow us on Instagram, LVC admissions, uh, subscribe to the podcast that we, that our office co the, that produces, uh, we'd, we'd love to be able to connect with you in some way, uh, shape or form. But, um, yeah, if anyone ever has any questions, I'll put my contact information in the chat and I'd be happy to connect with you in any way. So I think that ends my time. Great. Thank you so much, Cole. Yeah, Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Marist College. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Gina Jadellis, and I am an admission counselor at Marist College. Um, and I'm so excited to be with you tonight. Uh, so just to give you a sense of our college, uh, this is part of the main quad. Uh, and we are a small to medium sized private liberal arts college in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, so depending on uh, where you are in New Jersey, I know uh, Tom's River uh, is near and dear to my heart. That's currently where my parents live. Um, it's typically around two and a half hours. And we offer a variety of different majors for our students, uh, anything from fashion to computer science to biology uh, to uh, tracks to help you go into our PA and P uh, DPT program. Uh, we also are representative of 47 different states uh, as well. We always like to show that our students are successful with the graduation rate uh, well above the public and private average. Uh, and then also our students are finding those competitive jobs because of their ability to study abroad, uh, because of their ability for internships, uh, research, and their liberal arts education. And it really starts in the classroom where our students are able to work one on one with the professors. Again, our student to faculty ratio is going to be around 16 to one. So they're definitely going to know your name, who you are uh, and what you're studying at the college. If this is one of your core classes or if this is a, a class that you're taking for your specific major. And so again, you know, I just want to stress the importance of that liberal arts curriculum and that you are going to be well rounded that you are going to have uh, A strong base in communication skills, whether that's public presentation or written presentation skills. Uh, and then also it just helps you think about things in different ways uh, as well. So personally, my science class was a cooking class in the central market of Florence. And that's how I got to kind of expand my perspective on one of my core core subjects. So obviously I can't show you uh, all the facilities today. So these are just some highlights of our labs for our PA and DPT students. Uh, we have a brand new control room for our students in sports communications. Uh, you may have heard of the Marist poll uh, in some of the major news networks talking about it for the election our Bloomberg terminals, and our store on campus. So again, even our resources highlight the emphasis on hands-on learning at the college. Research is also an important factor of the college and the fact that our students are able to get hands-on research while being at the college, whether it's working one-on-one -on -one with a professor or working to get grants and scholarships. And again, these are some of our students who have gone on to get Fulbrights and other prestigious awards. And internships are a really essential part as about 83% of our students participate in at least one internship. Study abroad is really big for our students as well as about 43 uh, as about 50% of our students will study abroad at some point and we have over 70 different destinations to go to. As I mentioned, I studied abroad at our campus in Florence, Italy. Oops. 
And I just wanted to share that we are um, much more than just, um, you know, uh, academics, uh, but rather we also have clubs and campus involvement. So I want to be respectful of our time. And I just wanted to say thank you. And if you have any questions, I will put my information in the chat as well. Have a nice evening, everyone. Great. Thank you so much. As we're about halfway through our presentations, just a reminder that the Q&A widget is available if you have questions specifically for one institution or broader ones for all of our panelists. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Marywood University. Good evening, everybody. My name is Maria. I'm talking from Marywood University today. I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor at Marywood. So some fast facts about Marywood. So uh, we have 1900 undergraduate students and about 1000 graduate students. I always say we're kind of at a 3000 student population sweet spot, where we have a wonderful sense of community on campus and you're always going to see a familiar face on campus, where we're also large enough where we have over 100 clubs and organizations, you always have the opportunity to meet somebody new and do something new. Um, so we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio that's going to look like about 20 to 25 students in your major class and about 30 to 35 in your liberal arts cl classes, your general education classes. We cap our classes at that 30 to 35 students, um, so you'll never see any huge lecture halls on campus. And we don't have any teaching assistants, so professors are teaching all of our classes. And as you can see, our first year retention rate and our six year graduation rate are consistently higher than the national average. From day one, so from your very first day, your very first semester, you are going to start diving into your major. So for our architecture students, it looks like a design problem on the first day, and you're going to be in studio classes your very first semester. For our education students, you're going to actually be in the classroom your very first uh, year observing um, nutrition. You're in a foods lab your very first semester. In nursing and other sciences, you're going to be in you know, simulation labs and different labs diving into your major right away. Student life. So like I said before, we have over 100 clubs and organizations on campus. They range from department clubs to social clubs to service clubs. We have tons of leadership opportunities like student government, honor societies, orientation, resident assistance, and we have a really robust campus ministry on campus. So even though we are a Catholic institution, we are very open to everybody um, and anybody from any type of background. And so, you know, if you want to be connected with a service that isn't Catholic or any type of other religious interest, institution, um, you know, activities, our campus ministry can do that. We also have tons of service coming out of there and different fellowship groups and Bible studies. Um, so campus ministry is a really cool place to be. Fun on campus. So we have a really cool Marywood Activities Council. They are students who plan around events for other students on campus. Believe it or not, bingo is really big on campus. Um, and even in um, these current times with the pandemic, we've actually moved our bingos, our trivia nights, our game shows, mentalists, illusionists, everything like that virtually so our students can still be engaged. We moved athletic tournaments and uh, go yoga, socially distant outside, so our students are still um, able to participate in things and meet new people. And then in normal times, we typically have some big events like carnivals, formals, flapjack fest, where professors every um, Monday of finals week make you breakfast, a Marywood Madness, which is our annual pep rally and off campus. What I love about Marywood is we're kind of um, tucked in this very quiet, very safe residential section of Scranton, but we're only about five minutes from downtown Scranton. So in downtown Scranton, you're going to see local coffee shops, local boutiques, local restaurants. Um, that's where our aquarium is, movie theater. Kind of 10 minutes in another direction is Dixon City. That's your shopping district where the mall is, chain restaurants, chain stores. And then also kind of 10, 15 minutes in another direction is Montage Mountain, skiing, snowboarding, snow tubing in the winter and water park and concert venue in the summer. We also have in normal times have a lot of trips off campus. We usually do them about once a month. In the warmer months, we go to you know drive in movies, whitewater rafting, amusement parks. We always go to New York City um, for Christmas time. So fingers crossed we'll get back to these very soon. 
study abroad. So a lot of our students do study abroad. We have tons of different options. So if you're interested in those semester long placements, a lot of majors have the opportunity, even our more structured majors like architecture. I always love to use that as an example, just because we have a well established connection with the school in Florence, Italy, that all of our juniors are able to go and participate in nutrition. Same thing, nutrition and dietetics, more structured of a program. You actually get to study in Costa Rica for an entire semester, which is cool. We also have faculty led trips where you're able to take a class like the chemistry of wine and cheese for a semester and then you get to go to Europe over spring break and learn about wine and cheese in Europe. And then we have summer trips where you could take a class or two and then spend a month or two um, in any location that you'd like. We are a D3 school and we have a wonderful sport academic balance on campus and um, we have 22 varsity sports and what's really neat is that our coaches really focus on making sure that you uh, have study halls, your professors are pre pretty flexible um, to help you make up classwork and so our athletes have actually won um, awards for having such high GPA so if you want a school that has that sport academic balance we could be a good fit for you. The admissions process. So we are rolling admissions. So for seniors, you still have plenty of time to apply for juniors. Um, applications open up in August. Um, so for completed application, we need a an application, whether we're on Common App or our own application, a high school transcript, um, and one letter of recommendation. For our fall of 21 applicants, we are test optional, fingers crossed. Um, we will be test optional for our juniors right now, um, but the, a def, uh, an official decision hasn't been made yet. And then because we're rolling admissions, once everything is in, it's about a seven to 10 business day turnaround time. Additionally, you do get merit-based scholarship with your decision letter. It ranges from 16 to $23,000 per year and tons of our students get financial aid. To get to know us more, if you're interested in Marywood, we do have tons of in-person options. So you can come and meet with us, get tours, meet with faculty in different departments. We also have virtual meetings, virtual tours, um, admissions info nights and daily Instagram. And this is my contact information. I am your admissions counselor. So if you need anything, please reach out. And if you want to get to know, know us more, here's our social media. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Our next presentation this evening comes to us from Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Hello, everyone. I'm Rose. I am a counselor here at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. This here is a picture of our entire campus. So as you can see, we are pretty small. Um, we do have about 1700 undergraduate students on campus. Uh, we are located in Buzzards Bay, which is right on the cusp of Cape Cod. Um, as you'll see in a little bit, we are fully regimented, which makes us a little different from some of the other institutions presenting today. However, we are still a public university and we are not military. So you do not have to join the military by coming here. Uh, we're still a state school and we're actually one of six state maritime academies. All of our majors are STEM-based and bachelors of science. We do guarantee housing for four years. And then here is the average tuition fees, housing, meal, and your uniform cost listed at the bottom. So these are our seven majors that we offer. Like I said, they are all very STEM based, um, whether that is directly engineering or a lot of that math and science foundation. Um, we do offer US Coast Guard uh, licenses upon graduation for marine engineering and marine transportation. The other five majors uh, don't necessarily have to correlate with the maritime or shipping industries like the top two listed here would. Um, those are a lot more flexible and have more opportunities to have a career on land versus a career at sea. So we have this learn, do, learn philosophy where you kind of learn the basics in the classroom. You go out into your required internship or experiential learning. You take what you learn and you apply it. And then you bring all of that experience back into the classroom. So like I said, all of our majors, you do have to do some form of an internship or experiential learning, which is kind of like a mixture of study abroad and an internship. So this is the regiment. The all blacks that you see here up at the top is what you would be wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the whites at the bottom or your salt and peppers are more for formal things. Um, the regiment as a whole is designed to build character and leadership skills. We will teach you how to be a good follower and a good leader. 
all of the skills that you learn here, mainly time management, are really beneficial for your academic career and then also your post-college career. So this is kind of a little bit more about our campus life. So we do have 15 division three athletic teams listed over here on the left. And then we also have a student government association that likes to put on events all the time for our students. Uh, we do have our annual Emory Rice Day, which is just a big campus wide event. You get to get out of your uniform for a little bit. Um, and it's, it's a really big celebration. And then they also do different pop-ups. So sometimes they'll do a giveaway randomly or you'll walk outside and see a food truck on campus. Uh, they have weekly game nights. There's also a student lounge where you can hang out outside of your uniform and buy snacks and drinks for a discounted price, play air hockey and foosball with your friends. All of this um, definitely has changed a little bit with COVID, but our SGA is still putting on events virtually for our students. Um, we do also have a bunch of different clubs on campus, whether they're academic or military related or special interests. Uh, we have kind of everything to offer. And then if you're interested in music or band or drill team, honor guard, anything like that, uh, we do have that here on campus. Um, all of our dorms are called companies. So anyone that's involved in any of those activities all live together in seventh company. So those will be kind of your housemates uh, pretty much for the next four years. And if you would like to learn more, here is some of our contact information. And then I will also put my email in the chat. But thank you so much. Great, thank you so much. We have one more presentation before we transition to Q&A, so certainly feel free to start using that Q&A widget should you have any questions. But for now, I'm pleased to present Moravian College. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we are Moravian College. My name is Juliana Young. I am an Assistant Director of Admission at the institution. Uh, Moravian College's mission statement is one that holds true, uh, I think even more so throughout our time um, navigating this past year. Um, our liberal arts education prepares each individual for a reflective life, fulfilling careers, and transformative leadership in a world of change. I think that speaks volumes about who we are as an institution and, and has certainly held true throughout this past year. Moravian College's history is really um, quite incredible. We were founded in 1742, making us older than the United States of America, and we are the sixth oldest college in our nation. Moravian College is the first institution to educate women as well as Native Americans in their own language. In 1954, Moravian College did become a co-educational institution um, in the Lehigh Valley. We are um, tucked away in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is in the Lehigh Valley. Um, within the Lehigh Valley, we are a part of the Lehigh Valley Association of Independent Colleges, which is a consortium of independent colleges such as Lehigh, Lafayette, Muhlenberg, Cedarcrest, DeSales, and ourselves. Um, Moravian does have two campuses located up on our Main Street campus, as well as our Priscilla Payne Heard campus, which is just short of a mile down Main Street and home to our music and arts programs. We're about an hour north of Philadelphia and about one and a half hours south of New York City. Our campus being founded in 1742 is quite historic, but also very state of the art. This center picture here is of the Brethren's House, which was actually a field hospital during the Revolutionary War um, and is our oldest building on campus. That is put right next to our newest building on campus, such as the Sally Bridingham McShevitt Center for the Health Sciences, which is home to our renowned nursing program and health science students. Our student body is right around 1900 um, undergraduate day students, and we have over 55 academic majors and programs on campus. Some of our larger academic programs just by number and volume of students um, in those programs are nursing, health sciences, uh, specifically within the rehab sciences, education, early childhood ed, all the way through secondary certs, um, business and economics and psychology and sociology. 
Our student body is incredibly active. We have over 100 clubs and organizations on campus, and we have 22 varsity NCAA um, Division three sports on campus. The most recent addition has been men's and women's swimming. They will start competing next fall. Moravian College has an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio and an average class size of 17, meaning that your experience is going to be extremely individualized, very geared toward what your goals are, um, and connecting you with the right path after graduation. Moravian College is an Apple distinguished institution, which means every single student is provided a MacBook Pro, an iPad, and an Apple Pencil um, once they enroll at the college. Um, the goal of this program is to provide every student an equal playing ground when you enter the institution. And even better so, all of our students have the same access to technology as all of our faculty and staff members across campus. So there's never a hiccup when it comes to technology um, across our entire 85 acre campus. Our students gain the experience through so many different avenues. Um, internships and externships are extremely popular, especially for our junior and senior students, but can certainly be pursued as early as the second semester of your first year on campus. Undergraduate research is emphasized across all disciplines on our campus, and students often elect to do an honors project to capstone their academic um, program on campus their senior year. Study abroad programs are extremely popular and happen in a lot of different capacities on our campus, ranging from faculty led a uh, few week programs all the way through entire semesters or entire years abroad um, for students that have um, the interest in doing so. Our field experience for our education students start second semester of your first year on campus and our nursing students are being placed in clinical the first semester of sophomore year on campus. Um, our students are all getting the experience and are really lifting their whole um, time on campus to connect them to the outcome that you see here of a 98.3% um, job placement rate or graduate school placement rate within 10 months of graduation. Our institution is one that extremely uh, values civic engagement and community service, being that we evolved at the same time as the city we're founded in. Um, we always give back to our community because the community has given us so much. Quickly about the admission process at Moravian, we are a rolling admission institution. So as soon as we receive your application and its supporting documents, it will go through the review process. We are test optional for all non-nursing applicants and will continue to be so um, in the coming years. We would require as well an official high school transcript in your letter of recommendation. And we only have the early decision deadline there of November 15th. In addition to admission, we are thinking about financial aid. So the FAFSA does open on October 1st. So be um, ready for that when that does come out. Um, and we are awarding our merit scholarships up to $28,000 a year. 99% of our students do receive merit scholarships when they enter Moravian. Um, and it really supports them through um, the grants program at Moravian. If you have any questions, I will link my um, contact information below. And thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you so much. That concludes all of our initial presentations, but we do have some time remaining for Q&A. And so if you have any questions, certainly feel free to drop those in the Q&A widget, but we'll bring all of our presenters back now. And in the order of our initial presentations, kind of start off with one question. And that would be one that's a common one asked by students when they're looking at your institution, what is one kind of event or tradition um, that is really unique and something that they can get excited about? Sure. So a big one that we do here at LaSalle is called our Torchlight Parade. It is actually a beautiful ceremony. Um, it's actually done towards the end of our academic year. And it's when our seniors who have been on campus for four years um, actually literally pass their torch to um, rising juniors and sophomores um, to be able to literally pass their torch on, whether it be for a club activity within their major, just to a student who um, they really see as Kind of following in their footsteps and taking on new responsibilities that the seniors were letting go of so that is a really fun day for us and it's a really beautiful little ceremony that we get to do with our senior class before they leave us yeah i'll go next um one one of the um traditions that i really like that they do every year um is something called dutchman day our mascot is the dutchman 
And uh, every year that um, what we do is that the, the student affairs office will, will pick a day and they will cancel classes completely. And it'll be kind of like one big surprise for everybody, um, including the people that work at the college as well too. And they will, um, it'll basically be one big day where the uh, community kind of comes together. There's like food trucks and um, like inflatables and a bunch of other fun activities going on throughout the campus. So it's really nice when it's a really nice uh, like hot spring day out for everyone to be able to kind of just um, blow off steam and enjoy uh, the fun day together. So that's something I always really enjoy um, when it happens every year. Uh, mine is not so much a day or an event, but is rather um, kind of a goal before you graduate. Uh, so mine would be that we have lots of groundhogs on campus, uh, which is not the mascot of Marist. We are the Red Foxes, um, but around campus you will see the groundhogs and it is, you know, um, a tradition to try to pet a groundhog, um, which are surprisingly fast um, before you graduate. At Marywood, um, I would say my favorite tradition would be our Christmas tree lighting. So Marywood has a rotunda. I, I believe it's like the third largest rotunda in the state of Pennsylvania. It has millions of dollars worth of artwork in it. And we put a huge Christmas tree in there every single December. All the clubs and organizations hand make ornaments for it. Um, we're a multi-generational campus. So we have a daycare and an elementary school and a senior center. Everybody comes to this tree lighting. Um, usually a local child from the community is the one who lights the tree with the president, um, the choir, and all of our um, orchestra. They're playing and singing Christmas music, and our dining has cider and cookies, and it's really I always say it's like one of the events where like you can almost like feel the Marywood community. It's almost tangible. I would say um, my favorite is our orientation graduation. So at our school, our orientation is two weeks long and it's really intense, but then at the end, we invite all of your family back and there's a marching competition. So all of the different cohorts of students get to compete against each other and get awarded um, kind of throughout little challenges throughout those two weeks. And then you officially graduate and become like a student at Mass Maritime. Um, so all of that, kind of encapsulated in that, that graduation is definitely my favorite. Um, at Moravian College, history means a lot to us. Um, a few years ago, we celebrated our 275th year as an institution. And on that day, we hosted what is our newest tradition, which is Heritage Day. Um, we dedicate one day in the fall semester where entire campus shuts down. Um, members of our community come onto campus and we dedicate it to service. Um, I mentioned it in my presentation that community service means a lot to us and in the town of Bethlehem. Um, if anyone's familiar with Bethlehem, you know that um, this really hails true. Um, Heritage Day is an opportunity for us to go into our community and provide service across campus, boys and girls clubs, local elementary schools, uh, retirement homes in our area. And from President Grigsby to our first year students, um, we are providing ser or doing service in our community and really spend that whole day reflecting on what that means to us on an individual level, a community level, and then and as um, you know, the greater community of Bethlehem. So it's a day that we really enjoy and it's something that we collectively look forward to because it's not only important to us as an institution but to so many people it touches. So that's probably my favorite thing that we do. Great. Thank you all for sharing those events and traditions with us as well as your institutions overall. And thank you to everyone for joining us and tuning in. At the end of this webinar, you'll be prompted with a brief four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you may have. This is also just one of many different sessions that was happening as part of this college fair and all will be posted in about a week's time at the same website where you registered for this one. Thanks so much and have a great night.